I have been doing Homes Under the Hammer, believe it or not, for 17 years. So in that time, I have seen all sorts of things. And sometimes it is quite shocking, especially when you figure out that people were living in those houses just a few weeks before we arrived. Um, I think that, that it's the weird things that stick out. Like um, in one kitchen, there was a rabbit hutch right next to the other kitchen units. And you sort of think, what went on there? Why, why is there a rabbit hutch? I mean, was poor old, I don't know, Thumper brought straight out of the rabbit hutch. No, just didn't, didn't go there. It was just something that was completely out of character. The weirdest thing we've ever found in a property uh, was a dead body. Yeah, that was definitely a, an interesting day. Well, uh, sort of a dead body. I mean, the director went into the house to check and she came out white-faced and said, there is a dead body in the bed. So we sort of went, yeah, yeah, ha, 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 very funny. And then we all sort of trooped, trooped in, and sure enough, in the bed was a body. And then it started snoring. And it turns out the people had left in such a rush that they'd forgotten to take Grandad with them. So he woke up, surrounded by a film crew, going, where's my family? And, uh, and very shocked that his family had actually left the house and they'd forgotten to take him with him. So yes, it's, it's the little things like that that just make you think, oh my gosh. <laughs> wow, the property world is full of some very interesting things. Any house is sellable for the right price, okay? So even if it's got all sorts of problems, if the price is low enough to reflect those problems and the cost of fixing them, then it might still be something that's worth investing in. But you know, it is a bit of a cliche, but that whole thing about you know buying the worst house in the nicest street, it's harder to change the location. It's harder to change the area. You can do the house up as much as you like, but if it's next to a sewerage works or, you know, on a flight path or, or on a very busy road or it's got the neighbours from hell with a woofing dog, that's going to be harder to change. So in terms of saleability, at the right price, it'll still sell. Would you necessarily want to live there? Mm, probably not. TV came about to me in a very strange way. I, uh, I, I was a journalist. I, I started out in local radio. I did stuff on BBC Radio Manchester, and Radio Merseyside, and Radio Lancashire. And um, yeah, I was like a roving reporter. I was just on my shift working for BBC Radio Manchester one day, and I went up to the canteen, and I was in the queue waiting to buy my lunch. And there we got to the dessert section on my, I was rolling my tray down and there was a piece of a lemon meringue pie and it was bright yellow and it was phosphorescent yellow. It was like glowing like something out of some nuclear reactor. And I was laughing with the man inside of me about, about this. And we were saying, oh, lemon meringue pie. Like, wow, you touched that. I wouldn't touch it with the party pot. And we laughed about it. Anyway, so that's, that was the conversation we had. And then we, as we were walking towards the, the tills to pay, um, he sort of shouted after me, he said, by the way, what do you do? And I said, oh, I work downstairs in the local radio station. He said, have you ever thought about television? I'm like, no. <laughs> no. He said, well, if you ever think about it, give me a shot. Peter, fifth floor. I was like, yeah, okay, fine. Anyway, I did my shift on the radio station at, uh, at the end of the day. My curiosity got the better of me, and I phoned the receptionist. I said, um, it's for Peter, who's on the fifth floor. And they went, uh, well, only Peter, the head of television. I was like, ooh. Okay, <laughs> thank you. So I phoned him and he was just like, um, just something about you. I don't know what it is, but I, you know, I couldn't get where I am today without spotting these things. And I, I think you, you, you should give TV a go. And I've got a few names of people you should call. And that's how it started. When I'm presenting on stage, when I'm hosting events, when I'm doing after dinner speaking or, you know, corporate, uh, corporate events or whatever, um, you know, it's all about research, it's making sure you know the audience, what, what, what you're trying to do. Yeah, you know, again, I can work from uh, ad lib completely or, or auto cue or, you know, a, a combination of the two and interview anyone from a, you know, a senior managing director right down to a, you know, just, just to a worker beat. So I can be presenting to, um, you know, a room full of barristers and solicitors. Um, and I'll, I'll talk in one way. I can be talking to people from the RICS, the Rural Institute of Chartered Surveyors, and I'll be very technical. Uh, I can talk about the state of the market. I can talk about predictions for the future of the market. I can talk about things you can do to your homes to improve them. I can talk about issues. I can talk about news issues. 
uh, when it comes to the property market for, for those kind of people. And then if I'm, I might be at the other end of the spectrum doing something for the local WI, the Women's Institute, and they want to know more about the making of Homes Under the Hammer and a TV show like that, so I can talk all about the background to how Homes Under the Hammer is made, how the film crew work, how, how we find the properties, how the music is, is, is picked. It's just really figuring out what will entertain people and or inspire them or whatever. And a lot of the speeches I give will be inspirational and motivational. So it's about saying, you can do this. You know, you might look at it on television and think, yeah, it's a good TV show or whatever. Or you might look at me and say, oh, he's got all those properties. How did he do that? But I want to inspire people.